guys, I have to tell you before we get started, make sure you are following us at chicksontheright.com slash links. It's pink. It's fabulous. That's where all of our good social stuff is. Really, all of our stuff is fantastic. Our website, everything. But our social platforms are all there. Chicksontheright.com slash links. It's where you want to go. It has all the things. All the things. So go all there. of them. And good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Um, Okay, I want to just get through a few quick little headliney things before we get deep into any particular topic. And um, so sad news to report about a couple of people. Um, the first is that there were headlines screaming at me yesterday that Hulk Hogan is paralyzed from the waist down after an 11th spinal surgery. But uh, there's another article today that says he's lost feeling in his lower body which means he's using a cane to walk around. So I don't think if somebody is actually able to use a cane, you can consider that paralyzed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, it, if he can't actually feel or have sensation in his legs, that's, that's a huge problem. They had to, like, cut some nerves or whatever. That's a lot of back surgeries, you guys. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, I've had one, and it was, like, the worst thing I've ever been through. Worse than anything I've ever been through in my life. So at 11, no, thank you. Thank you. But no, that's a lot of back surgery. Not Damn. Like that. Mm -mm. So anyway, that's the first uh, little piece of bad news. And then the second is that Shirley Feeney has passed away. Shirley from Laverne and Shirley. Her real name is Cindy Williams. Um, she has died at the tender age of 75 from an illness. I don't know what the illness was, but... I know. Shirley. Shamil Shamazel, you guys. Shamil Shamazel. We're going to do it our way. Yes, our way. <laughs> I love them so much. I did too. I loved That's them. Joe. If you guys are like our age, you remember that show. I love that yeah. show so much. Yeah, so that's, that's some sad news. Uh, oh, and then yeah. another quick headline is that Alvin Bragg, who is the Manhattan DA and is obsessed with Trump every bit as much as Letitia James is or was, uh, he is now giving evidence to a grand jury about the whole Stormy Daniels hush money payment. Um, and Michael Cohen is going to be Ugh, uh, testifying. So this is a thing. This is an actual case that is going in front of the the grand jury. And so they're saying that if Trump is convicted of and I don't know exactly what the charge would be. So, OK, so did he pay Stormy Daniels off to not talk about the fact that they had a sexual encounter? Maybe. And so if he did that, apparently that is a crime in some sort of way that could get him four years in jail, which I don't know the crime. I don't know why it's a crime if you oh pay somebody. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand all the intricacies <laughs> of that. But that is a, a thing that is happening. And Trump is losing his mind about it. I mean, losing his mind. Insisting is that all that, that Michael, an affair, all is that, that stuff. all that Michael Cohen does now? This is all that pretty he much. does. He's That's just like, this is all he does. He's like, where, where can I testify against Trump? Where can I, <laughs> right. where can I test? That's all he does. What yeah, that's pretty much it. Schmuck that guy is. <laughs> yeah. So I don't nice know. Life. I don't know how that's all going to. But, you know, New York City is not kind to Donald Trump. So this is this is going to be a thing. And it, it's that's ramping up this week. So that's another thing that's happening. Um, and then we have to talk about uh, the nimbiest nimby guy in all of NIMBY town. Steph Curry, professional NBA basketball player. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I did not know that this guy, Steph Curry, is like super involved in nonprofits that deal with, um, how does he even put it? Like it's a nonprofit that deals with uh, bridging the racial wealth gap. So this is a super, you know, important thing to him. Um, and he wants to make sure that there's, you know, there's bridging of that gap, but not in his backyard. Because what's happening now, and let me just share my screen. You have to see his uh, giant mansion. So he is in California. I don't know if you can see that, but this. It's sprawling. It's very it's sprawling. sprawling. It's yeah. a $31 million mansion. Okay. Mm. The problem is that apparently it's expected that there's going to be low income housing built within eye shot of his mansion. Oh, which 
he's very, very worried about. And he so can't have that. He mm -mm. sent a letter to the town saying, this is the town of Atherton. Okay. And it says, as Atherton residents, we've been following along with the housing element updates with special interest in the 23 Oakwood property. We hesitate to add to the not in our backyard rhetoric, but we wanted to send a note today bef or before today's meeting. Safety and privacy for us and our kids continues to be a top priority and one of the reasons we chose Atherton as home. So he... <laughs> Oh, they always God. want the policies, right? As yeah. long as the policies don't affect them personally. Okay, so what he's saying is he doesn't want any poor black people in his neighborhood. <laughs> is that what he's saying? Is that what he's saying? I mean, I think you're paraphrasing. I mean, but... I think it's a good paraphrase, though, right? <laughs> it's like, so he wants to bridge the gap, just not right. near his house, is right. what he's saying. Right. Because I don't want to add to that rhetoric, not in my backyard, but I don't really want those people in my backyard. I yeah. don't want them. I don't want them there. It's Just so it's so it. typical. Just say it, you <laughs> raging hypocrite. God, these people. It's they really just are hypocrites. so typical, right? Yeah, it's so typical. typical. And so then he said, like at the end of the letter, he said something about how um, oh, well, let me backtrack because it was in 2021 that he joined that nonprofit and yeah. it's called 90 to zero. And it's all about promoting economic equality and opportunity. And he oh, said yeah. at the time, he said, and I quote, Bridging the racial wealth gap is one of the biggest challenges of our generation. Oh. Uncovering solutions and creating opportunities opportunities is something I am profoundly committed to. I bet. Just not in his backyard. <laughs> just, just not in your neighborhood, right? Right, Stephen? Just not in your not in your neighborhood. She yeah. doesn't want it to be right there. Now he is saying that if the town is committed God. to creating this low income housing mm. apartment building or whatever it is that they're doing. He said, yes. uh, should that he, he asked for higher fencing and landscaping. He said, should that not be sufficient for the state? We ask that the town commits to investing in considerably taller fencing oh, and landscaping oh. to block sight lines onto our family's property. He wants a border. You guys, <laughs> He wants a border, but I, what do you, what do you want to bet that that guy is like <laughs> anti like us saying that we want a border on the app? Oh, he's a like super a, lib, super oh lib. My God, this guy is a piece of work. Like <laughs> but he wants giant fences, giant oh, yeah. fences around his He doesn't want the riffraff looking at his house. No, he doesn't want him have in that. His, doesn't want him near his $32 million house, like in his fancy neighborhood, but he wants a border wall basically built around his neighborhood. What a dick. <laughs> God, these people. I know. I know. It's so great. Unbelievable. People were asking why my name is Macrobiome Shield <laughs> today. <laughs> and the reason is because uh, GenuCell's Microbiome Shield is currently the free gift that you get when you order the most popular package at genucell.com slash chicks. And you guys, right now, huge Valentine's Day special. So if you go to genucell.com slash chicks and order something between now and Valentine's Day, you're going to get a beauty box that contains two luxury gifts. It's luxury. Free. They're very luxury. luxurious. I did make a mistake with my favorite product from GenuCell. So really? you know how I love the microdermabrasion um, and I try to use it like once every couple of weeks when I remember, but I went at it extra hard. <laughs> this is like past weekend. I scrubbed my uh, cheeks so hard with it that like I have abrasions on both sides, right? Really? Here. You, can't, you can see them like when you're up close, but it's like super rough. I've got these two rough patches because I went a little bit too hard on the scrubby scrubs. Yeah, you don't need to. You I scrub need. with my like strength instead of just the product, which does a phenomenal job all on its own. So fair warning to those people who get a little too excited with their microdermabrasion scrubs. Ease up. I actually use that Ease stuff. On, I use that stuff on my arms. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use it on my arms. I use it. I use it in different. I don't just use it on my face. I know it's a little. <gasps> I have not tried that. Yeah, I need to I'd... try that, mm -hmm. especially like in the summertime. Just like putting that out there. Yeah, I do. I am going to try that mm -hmm. so I can have abrasions all over. You get <laughs> <laughs> got to stay supple, ladies. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, so. you guys take advantage of the whole Valentine's thing because I'm dying to know what's in the beauty box. <laughs> so somebody order, get yourself the beauty box with the two luxury gifts for free. Report back on what yes. they are because we tell us would what, really like to Tell know. us what's in it. Totally. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, all right. Let's get to some big, big news. Of course, the Tyree Nichols story still dominating all the news stations. And of course, it got a lot of coverage on The View. So Whoopi said, um, <sighs> maybe we need to start seeing more white people beaten up. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's, a, <laughs> maybe that's, that's a the solution. Answer. And then she was like, don't, and she was like, don't come at me. Don't email I, me. I don't mean it, but I am saying it. But I'm like, just saying, I'm saying it. it. What, what kind of commentary is that? What is that? <laughs> Let's hear it uh, straight oh from God. her because it's you have to see it to believe it. White policemen or black policemen, it is a problem in the police, in the policing yes. itself, you know. Seems things don't seem to make sense to people unless it's somebody they can feel or they can mm -hmm. recognize. But how many times do we have to, do we need to see white people also get beaten before anybody will do anything? No. I'm not suggesting that. So you don't write it. us and tell me what a, you know, what a racist I am. I'm just asking, is that, is that what people have to see in order to wake up and realize this affects us all? She's a piece of work, right? She's I mean, unbelievable. And we all know, all of us collectively know that something has to be done about this. But when when all of those cops are black and they kill a black like person that didn't deserve this, they murdered this this man. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's. And then you take race out of that. You say that this was be, this was done because of race, because of white supremacy. We're all kind of like, oh, not all of us, but a lot of us are looking at this going, it's not, it, that wasn't because of, it wasn't because of white supremacy, you know, like it, this is the thing. You cannot blame it on that. We all want to get to the, the, the reason for this. We want to, we want to solve the problem, but that's not the reason for it. Like you're trying to find a scapegoat that is not, it's not the reason that's not the scapegoat. Like it's, you need to stop that. And so we can't get to the solution if you're not willing to do that. Well, of course. And, and you know, when there were all these cries for defund the police, a lot of times what happened when police departments were defunded is that their training was the first thing to get cut. Right. So, I mean, so not only are they struggling with recruiting and having to actually hire criminals themselves to act as police, they no longer have the funding to do necessary training. And this is what you get. So yeah. you, it's, it's like one of these, uh, a, another time where you just want to scream at progressives, be careful of what you wish for you mm -hmm. idiots, because you are the ones that are constantly creating the problems. Yeah. Constantly. I mean, they're, yeah, they're 500 cops short in Memphis. I think that's the number that I heard the other day. That's a lot. <laughs> that is, I mean, 500 short. And so when you're 500 short and you're trying to recruit people, it's like, think about that with a company. Like you just, yeah. you're going to look, you're going to hire people from the bottom of the barrel. And what do you think? Because that's gonna, all there is. Right. What do you think you're going to get? Well, I mean, I think we're seeing it. And for them to act like this is this this happens every single day, and this is like an uh, you know a systemic problem, and all cops are are b words. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is what they shout in the street. What? How is that helpful? I mean, because clearly it's not true. There are so many good cops who are just as much in agony over what they saw in that video as everybody else. Yeah, who are just, who are mortified that they're lumped in with those same people. Yeah, but don't you think that those good cops are like, screw this, I'm out of here. I mean, if I were so a cop, many of them have, yeah, right. If I were a cop and I saw what's going on and I saw this and then I saw what th that sort of commentary on the View, I'd be like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's a it's a cyclical thing. I mean, the good cops are are leaving not only because they've been you know crapped on in the past, but because of stuff like this, where it's just like it's a never ending cycle of just crap. Where they're probably they're just like I'm out of here I'm done I can't do yeah. this anymore you know I can't because it's just a constant barrage of this and so they're and just going to blame leave. them you can't right. blame them you can't blame them no <sighs> well and you know I read too that um, 
Mayor Adams in New York City is now going to require essentially CRT training for the police force there. And Anna Navarro on The View yesterday is suggesting somehow that this whole story is proof of why we need CRT in schools. Listen to this crazy. Many more times. And this is why we cannot ban history. This is why. Tell this your This is why. Tell your guy. We need to learn. Tell from, him. You know, this is why, in the midst of all of this happening, banning AP African American studies in Florida is the what wrong thing to do world? because we need to learn from history, not to repeat the same things oh over and over again. God, these I women mean, are out of their minds. They're so Plus, stupid. I, just, they're I mean, so stupid. I, unless unless I've missed something, I don't think that we've gotten any of the footage from the like before they took him out of the car i mean is that have is that is that, that's not been released yet so we well, I, don't, I don't even know if it exists because they're trying is, to say it was reckless driving was the reason right. they pulled him over there's no evidence of that this is the thing we don't know like we like why was this guy pulled over this is the, i mean we need that's that's something that's not been answered at least i don't know the answer to that question so why was he pulled over in the first place what the well, hell and I'm seeing on? rumors all over Twitter. There's rumors about like this was personal, right? Right. Like, there's there's That's a personal angle that we don't know yet. Something and with FedEx. Something with FedEx and working at FedEx and like there was some sort of a connection there. I've been seeing that too. Yeah. And my, like my husband sent sent me something last night, and he's like, "Is this true? Did was there a connection with FedEx and like some sort of a um, a relationship thing that was happening there?" And I said, "I don't know. I mean, I don't. We don't know what we don't know." Yeah. So there's so many questions still that need to be answered with this. I mean, it's just because there's there's missing pieces. There are so many missing pieces that we have to have filled in and they need to do that. I think the well, public and it, it's so crazy, too, that like all the cops are, you know, there will be justice like all five of those cops are right. being charged. Right. And so. But that's also something that's making progressives mad because they're like, oh, well, so now we're all of a sudden going to like charge these cops right away because they're black. It's like you can't win. So they say no justice, no peace. But then when you give justice, when you when you say, OK, here's the justice, then they're like, well, now it's racial. I mean, there's just like it's, there's no winning. What were you what, were you not going to were you not going <laughs> to like serve justice in this case? We all saw the tape. Like you said, what did you. What did you expect? <laughs> this is so freaking crazy. It is. I it's missed nuts. the super sticker. I'm so sorry. Whoever sent that, I'm so sorry that I didn't catch your name. <laughs> I'm scrolling and trying to find it and I can't. But I saw you and I appreciate you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Super sticker. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, this this is the thing. It's like, it's, yeah, you're right. You can't win. You can't. You can't. But, we, but the, we all saw that and we know what it was. So why would there not be justice? It's insanity. well because you can't you can't have that swift of justice. Oh my the, god! If it's black people, you got to be <sighs> more. I don't know. There's no that doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. No, you're absolutely. Oh my right. gosh. Uh, also, you guys, there is a special going on at OmahaSteaks.com. It's love at first bite. I love this. It's for Valentine's Day. I know you love Valentine's. She loves Valentine's Day. You guys. I love that. She's, Yay. it's going to be crazy. She's going to be wearing all red and pink that day. So just prepare yourselves for an onslaught. I will. And on Valentine's day, it will be one year, knock on all the wood that I have been stroke free. That's so true. That I make up. it through the show. Then it'll be a whole <laughs> official year. <laughs> I know you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty stoked about it. So mm -hmm. yeah. So Valentine's day, Omaha steaks has a special steaks are so yummy. And you know what? Why go out? When you can order yourself all the right fixings for a super romantic meal at home. That's true. You can have filet mignon wrapped in bacon. You can have delicious scalloped potatoes. You can have apple tartlets for dessert. Like the whole thing is already there for you at Omaha Steaks. And it's $30 off when you use code chicks at checkout at omahasteaks.com. Yeah. Love it first bite. And then you don't have to drive home and then bounce chick up. Bounce, bounce. <laughs> no saying. designated driver needed. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. Switching gears. I saw an interesting investigative report from journalist Cheryl Atkinson, who's a fantastic journalist. And she was doing this expose on the Houston I forget if it's Houston Methodist hospital system or Houston medical system. 
you'll you'll hear it. This is a two-parter, but it's super interesting because there were Houston, that particular hospital system was the first in the whole country to mandate that their healthcare workers be vaccinated. And so there were doctor, there are doctors that Cheryl uh, interviewed who were talking about how they were initially disciplined and then ultimately let go because they refused to get it. And now and they're speaking out and they want people to know what they were seeing. Here is the first part. Our story comes from Houston, where we have a rare group interview with medical professionals turned whistleblowers from the first hospital in the nation to require COVID vaccines. They see a disturbing health care trend that could ultimately impact all of us. My name is Dr. Venu Jilapali. I was on staff at Houston Methodist The Woodlands and got suspended and ultimately terminated due to the vaccine mandate. You did not want to get vaccinated? No. Dr. Venu Julapali is among an outspoken group of medical professionals once affiliated with Houston Methodist. Methodist was the first hospital system in the nation to require COVID vaccines. That I refused to get the, the vaccine. I spoke out on social media saying vaccine mandates were wrong. And I said, and I don't want to take so it. I ultimately gave my notice and I went somewhere else. And I was suspended and then terminated. It's rare to find medical professionals from such a prominent hospital system speaking on camera on the topic, punished, they say, for using independent medical judgment, which they consider a hallmark of sound medicine. Dr. Julapali started an email group of more than a thousand of his colleagues to discuss and debate the policies. Many, he said, would only share their true feelings with him in private. The level of fear among our colleagues, among the medical staff, in terms of expressing their opinion, whatever it was, because they were afraid that they were going to be retaliated against by the institution, Houston Methodist, was off the charts and continues to be off the charts. That's freaking whack. Yeah, it's whack. I mean, it's crazy. Two, two hours down the road from me. Isn't that crazy? And it's in, in Texas. I mean, of all places yeah. in freaking Texas, you guys. Yeah. Well, and they the next clip that you'll see um, will show the CEO, like whoever is like top dog at Houston Methodist explaining why he did what he I mean, he totally stands behind the thing. In fact, he's he was super proud of the fact that they were trailblazers on requiring the vaccine. So here the, he's going to be included in this clip. Again, firing unvaccinated employees in June of 2021. CEO Dr. Mark Boom made the controversial vaccine mandate a linchpin of his leadership and encouraged others to follow. I think patients should be demanding this at all hospitals. And frankly, I think you will see the floodgates begin to open at hospitals. We've seen, you know, a whole bunch of hospitals follow suit. It took a couple months, but they've been following suit. Um, and I think you're going to see many, many more. And there were many more. With Houston Methodist leading the pack, within three months it was reported that at least 174 health systems were mandating COVID vaccines. The requirements triggering protests and court battles. Father, I just want to put it out to you right now to protect all these employees of Methodist and to tear down the medical tyranny. A lawsuit against Methodist filed by employees got dismissed. The federal judge ruled that the hospital had made a choice to keep staff, patients, and their families safer. Unreal. Many at Methodist agreed. But these seasoned professionals claim the vaccine mandate didn't make patients safer at all. And they gave numerous accounts of vaccinated employees coming to work ill. Owen Robinson is a critical care registered nurse. At that time, the management in the Methodist ICU for, forced two nurses to come in sick Positive with, with COVID. COVID, with symptoms, fevers, and take care of patients in the ICU. Oh my God. So that completely obliterates our argument as far as patient safety, because there's nothing more unsafe than having sick nurses taking care of immunocompromised patients in the ICU. One nurse was so sick, she had a trainee, a new nurse, and she spent the entire day sitting at the desk, most of, most of the time with her head down on the desk because she was so ill and her trainee was taking care of the patients. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just not, and I can't, I don't know what that means if the case was dismissed, if they can 
refile it. Like, I don't know, but, but this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Yeah. And that CEO is like, I stand behind it. I'm a big <laughs> freaking hero. Yeah. Look at you, dude. Uh, yeah. And he's, and wow. that guy is just like making so much money. Those, oh my like, God. Hospital CEOs make so much bank. You guys. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, yeah. crazy. that is unreal. So, and you know, good on them for speaking out and for yeah. putting their careers on the line to say totally. all the things. Yeah. I hope that but, doctor, I hope all those people went and they found other jobs in places where they didn't have to be vaccinated, mm -hmm. where there's freedom. Yeah. Cause it's exactly. America. God, unbelievable. <laughs> in Texas, of all places, Texas. I know. It's so disappointing. Yeah, it is. It's just so disappointing. Not even right. Um, Also, I put this on our website yesterday, chicksontheright.com. You should be reading every day. If you're not, you should. Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates was in an inter interview. I don't know who this woman is that's talking with him, but she was very, very pushy. When it, I, And pushy is not the right word because she was doing a great job. Uh, but asking him about his relationship with Jeff Epstein. And he get he tries to blow it off at first, but you can tell that he she's not just going to let it go. And you can also tell that he gets more and more defensive and cagey kind of mm -hmm. about answering the question. And I just thought it was so fun to watch. <laughs> so I'm sharing it here. Did you see it? Did you see his eyes kept looking? He, he kept looking at the camera. Yeah. His eyes kept shifting to the camera. What a God, that guy. <laughs> yeah. And there were multiple dinners. Oh multiple yeah. Multiple dinners. Now his wife was interviewed about this. I don't know if you saw the interview with his wife. Ex-wife. Um, Ex I'm sorry, Melinda. Yeah, his ex-wife. I think she had an interview with Gail King. Mm. It was Oprah's BFF. Same kind of questioning, right, about Epstein. And she said that she had dinner with him once, only once. And she's like, because I, because he basically gave me the heebie-jeebies. <sighs> like, I could, so creepy, creeped me out so bad, I, I had nightmares. Like, he was just so gross. He just, like, it affected me so much that I could not. I, there's no way I only met with him once because he's and so that, gross. And then she tried to convince Bill to stop. Mm -hmm. So why would, why wouldn't he heed his wife's, his, why wouldn't he heed her advice on that? What, like if I, if my husband and I had dinner with somebody, I know that you're the same way. If you and Ron had dinner with somebody or, you know, if Greg and I had dinner with somebody and I was like, that person skeeves me out. Yeah. I know that my husband would be like, all right, we're done with that. I mean, would, wouldn't you yeah. be the same way with your husband? Like my husband would take my advice on that or we would, we would be done with that person. It's, that's just the way that we are. And he'd be like, okay, we're, we're done. We're done here. We're done here. <laughs> but isn't it weird that he didn't take her advice on that? Don't you think that's odd? And then now for him to just barely say, well, I kind of sort of regret having dinner with him. Right. I mean, man, I wish, I wish Gillen would freaking talk. Right. I mean, granted <laughs> they're divorced now. So there's probably, there's obviously reasons for that, but mm -hmm. still the fact that she's like, yeah, I did that once. He's completely disgusting. Obviously he's disgusting. Right. He was disgusting. Now he's all sorts of dead, but it's, you know, that whole, that interview, I mean, you watch her and then you watch him two totally different mm -hmm. takes on him. <laughs> All of it is so freaking creepy yeah. and cringe. Ah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, moving on. I have another clip of Kamala saying things that make no sense <laughs> and that just go in like a little circle, a word circle, if you will. Uh, here she's talking about, I don't even remember what she's saying is intergenerational, but you tell me if this makes any sense. It's really, that's also what's also exciting about our small businesses and who they are, because it spans the generations in addition to being intergenerational. It's <laughs> the same freaking thing. She's so weird about that. She so spans generations in addition to, to being, being intergenerational. intergenerational. It's the same <laughs> thing. She is so good at being redundant. You know? Yeah. She it's really her specialty. Is. She can be redundant in a, such a redundant way. That's so <laughs> redundant. I don't know how she does that. But also so redundant. Well. She's also very redundant mm -hmm. in a redundant way. <laughs> so in her redundancy. Yes, it's, she really is. Yeah. It's amazing. She's so Thank great you, at repeating Bruce. yourself. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank ah. you so much, Bruce. Um, okay. What? Oh, yeah. So there's there, as you know, Mayor Adams has been pushing, pushing, pushing for more federal and state support when it comes to dealing with all of the illegal migrants who have been dropped off by buses, thanks to Governor Abbott, Governor DeSantis. Uh, all these these migrants are getting shipped off to New York City and dumped right there in New York City for Mayor Adams to deal with. And so he's been like, I need more money, more money, more money, because he yeah. thinks that that's the answer to everything. And in the meantime, he was apparently housing migrant men, single adult men, at some swank hotel uh, in New York City, in Manhattan. And now that there are new family n- families coming in to that area, he basically had the hotel kick out the guys and he wanted to move them to not luxury accommodations, but like still accommodations nonetheless. Well, the migrants are mad. They're they're like, we deserve better space than what you're giving us. So we're <laughs> God, just going to put people. tents out on the street. So we've got a report here uh, from Fox about this to say what's going on. It's just too, too delicious. Here it is. It's housed in a New York City hotel are now refusing to leave as the city tries to move them into a newly opened shelter. David Lee Miller is live here in Manhattan. He's got more on that for us. David Lee. Sandra. At this hour, there is a standoff taking place between the migrants and New York City officials. You can take a look behind me and you get a glimpse of what's taking place here Uh. just outside Hell's Kitchen neighborhood in Manhattan. A few dozen migrants living on the street say they will not move. All of them are single men who were told this weekend they had to leave their rooms at a Westside hotel in order to make room for migrants with families, including women and children. The plan was for all the single men to be relocated to a cruise line terminal in Brooklyn that has been set up as a temporary shelter. Many of the migrants say the terminal is not acceptable and want better quality housing. They are now not being allowed back into the hotel. A few dozen migrants remain there. They refuse to leave. Some holdouts were removed this afternoon. A number boarded buses taking them to that Brooklyn site, while just as many decided to camp outside on the street, outside the hotel. Now, New York City homeless outreach workers have tried and failed to convince the men that living on the street is not an option, although the migrants did agree to remove a, about a dozen or so are not happy with the terminal, the housing, the shelter that's being made for them. It's not suitable, you guys. They need better luxury accommodations. I have so many words I want to say. <laughs> I mean, I just, it's like it, inappropriate. Like, hide your kids, hide your wives kind of words. <laughs> say them, say them, say them. I just, like, it's, it's, I just, like, these people need to be shipped back. To where they came from. Yep. Like, how dare you? How dare you say that, like, you think you deserve better? How dare you? I, you know, they, these people, these liberals, they, they deserve what they get. They asked for this. They asked it's just, for this. But I don't want to end up having to pay for, I mean, I know we all do anyway. We all will pay for You know for who it. should pay for them? You know who should pay for them? Freaking Steph Curry. That's who <laughs> should pay for them. Yes. They should yes. all go to his house, to a sprawling $32 million mansion. They should all go live on his freaking <laughs> front lawn. They should all go live on his front lawn. Because these bleeding, I get so sick of these bleeding hearts who are like, we should all just help them. Then you help them. I'm sick of helping them. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of paying for them. I'm sick of helping them. I'm tired of it. They're all entitled, spoiled brats. They come here and people are like, but they need help. They're escaping horrible situations. Do you think that those people who are bitching and moaning about those like swank accommodations are escaping something? No, they're yeah. not. If, if they, they were, were, they would be grateful. You're damn straight. You're damn straight. They'd be grateful. They're not escaping anything. Those are just like... Oh God, the entitlement, the entitlement is unbel- It's off the charts. How dare they? There was a, a guy from the Dominican who was interviewed and he was crying. He's all crying saying, I just came here to work. I just, I want to work, but like, I don't there, I can't live this way. I'm not an animal. And I'm just like, you gotta be, gee, there are people who also would like to come here and work who are waiting in the line to do it legally. How about, oh what God. about them? There are citizens, there are American citizens, like single moms who can't like feed their kids who are living on the street, who would never get the opportunity to live in that swank hotel. There are veterans who don't have food. What are are we helping them? No. No. And then we give people (laughs) from other countries a swank hotel room for however long they want it. 
it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. Yeah. I get, I'm so tired of this crap. Yeah. It's insane. Entitlement. It's just, it runs rampant. It's, that's not the way this country is supposed to be. That's not the, it's not what we, that that's not how we're supposed to do things. And honestly, you know, we are what $31 trillion in debt. If we're going to start cutting things, that's the first thing that should be cut. These people, sorry, bye. You get to go back to where you came from. Right. We need to take care of our own. If people don't like me saying that, fine, call me a bigot. I don't care. <laughs> We've been called worse. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, last story before we get to whack, and whack is a good whack today, you guys. I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> uh, Tucker did Tucker did a, a long piece. We're not going to play the whole thing. Hi, Kasha Rooney. <laughs> He's like, he heard me yelling. <laughs> He's like, are you upset? <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Tucker did a huge, huge story about all the crazily, oddly, weirdly coincidental destructions of property when it comes to food manufacturing and plants that make food. A lot of that has been happening lately and no one's really right. talking about it. Uh, and it's super, super weird, particularly in light of the fact that some months ago, Joe Biden was predicting a food shortage. And now all of a sudden, all these places that make food are just, they're having unexplained fires and like mm -hmm. private planes are crashing into them inexplicably. And it's just a lot right now, especially that eggs are so expensive. Nobody can like eggs are basically diamonds at this point. And so then all of a sudden a chicken farm with a hundred thousand chickens catches on fire for mysterious yeah. reasons. Like it's just weird. So he talked about that a little on his show last night. And then you've got some stuff to add that we have to get to. But first, here's Tucker. Saturday, an enormous commercial egg farm in central Connecticut burned to the ground for no obvious reason. Huge fire. At least 20 fire departments responded, fought the blaze for over eight hours. More than 100,000 chickens died. Now, that's a sad story. But what's interesting is that most media companies did not consider it a story at all. Weird considering egg prices have become an actual problem for most Americans. Egg prices are up more than 100% in many places. And yet, at that exact moment, when eggs are a concern, 100,000 chickens die in a freak fire, and the New York Times, which is right next door in a neighboring state, does not even cover the fire? What is that? Don't worry. Things like this have nothing to do with egg prices, say the media. It's just avian flu. What is going on? Yeah, that's I think the thing that's the most alarming, which he brought up in his piece last night, was that it's it's not a concern by like the agriculture folks. It's like our, our US ag department. N nobody seems to care. It's not an emergency. You know, this stuff the fact that we're paying, you know, in some places around the country eight dollars for a dozen eggs, that doesn't seem to bother people. And the, the powers that be don't seem to care about that. They should care. And then stories on TikTok, you know, like it's floating all over TikTok. And I don't have chickens anymore. God, I wish I did. <laughs> wish really that's a big regret. We didn't bring our chickens with us to Texas. And we had a bunch of chickens when we were in Indiana. Cute little chicken house or chickens. We can get you know. chickens now. We could, we could, we just don't have them here. Um, we have livestock instead. So we, we just, we don't have chickens. But the thing is, is that um, they would produce what every 24 days, whatever they'd lay a bunch of eggs or not every, they no, they produce like every what, seven days we get like, um, we get a bunch of eggs, right? So the, the hens would lay and people are saying on TikTok that their hens are not laying. So if they buy commercial feed, which a lot of people buy like the Purinas and stuff like that, they're not laying and they're like, what the heck's going on? Like, it's really strange that they're not laying like they used to. So for months they would notice that their, their egg production has just completely stopped, which is bizarre. Like, that's just a weird thing. And people were thinking, well, maybe it's just me, but then they got on social media and they noticed that it's a, it's a common thing. Like a bunch of people are having this issue. They'd switch to local feed and their hens would start laying again. What Which is, is going on? Like, what is that? What's going on? Yeah. So that is kind of weird. So, you know, you listen, you can call these people conspiracy theorists, but when it's happening to a bunch of people and they start talking about it, I mean, it's not really a conspiracy theory as much as it's just happening, right? I mean, this yeah. is it's just fact. It's just happening to people. So I guess, you know, my point here, which is also, it was Tucker's point last night, is if this is happening to a bunch of people, don't you think like the U.S. ag folks would be looking at this going, okay, well, what's going on? If this is happening mm -hmm. and this is something that's happening within our country, we probably should start 
investigating this. We should look Unless at this. Unless it's by design. Right. And they're not and talking about crazy. it. They're not talking about it. This is so, so what, did the feed recently change? Is that like, did that Purina stuff that everybody was starting to put the pieces together? Did it, was it changed somehow? And we just don't know. We just don't know. Well, if you, if you switch to local feed, which is what, you know, I, I, obviously it's not like a national, like a national brand, like a Purina and you just go to like your local feed store, which is something that they make for you, which is not a national brand. Right. And they give it to you and there's nothing messed up, messed up about it, which is what their theory could be, which is yeah. what they're theorizing. Um, and then all of a sudden your eggs, I mean, your hens start laying. I mean, this is, this is what? the thing. That is, it's that's like, just weird. it's almost like switching to organic, right? It's like switching right. to something that's locally made as opposed to something that's nationally made, which is what mm -hmm. a lot of these folks did. And then all of a sudden their chickens started laying again. It's just weird, right? It's I, just I didn't, weird. Yeah. So I, I'm just putting that out there because this is happening to people. Yeah. Well, and clearly there's like huge damage happening to these manufacturing plants. And it's weird. Right. This That fire that was over the weekend, that's not the first incident. There's mm -hmm. a lot. And they're all just super random and right. not covered very much, not ever connected. So it's just weird. And right. so we thought and from, we listen, at least point it out. From a chemical perspective, I have no idea what would be in feed to make chickens right. stop. Like, I'm not an ag expert. I'm not a... You know, I don't know how to do, I don't know about the bio, whatever engineering to make chicken stop laying eggs. I have no idea, but there's something that did that, or mm -hmm. this is what people are surmising that this is what happened. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just all very interesting. All I know is that food production and food is very important to a population. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I feel like this is stuff that we should probably be concerned about more so care. than gender, more so than gender pronouns. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Okay, so you've got the wackest of all wax today, and it's I pretty whack. It's I have pretty, so many questions. It's pretty. I don't whack. know what you want me to show. I don't. You're well. I, I don't. Okay, so there's this guy. Um, I'm just going to show this. Okay, there is this guy. I don't even know how old he is. I know that he was mentally ill. It was a um a thirty four, thirty four years old. He got so mad. He said he was in a fit of hormonal rage. Um, first of all, you, I, I didn't do my tease. You guys make sure that you're following our website at chicksontheright.com. I think Mock already did it, but um, but he, he got he was in a fit of hormonal rage, which I didn't realize that men had. I didn't know that they had hormonal rages. I thought it was just us women. So he was menstruating. I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess he was. So he um so he was mad. And he ate a um, condom wrapped banana. That's what that is. That's what this you're looking the, at right now. This is the first of its kind. First and only of its kind from what I read in the article. How? They had to how take this out of him. He, he, how did he, he swallow kind of, that? I don't know. He did. He just got so mad and he just like swallowed it in, hormonal, in a hormonal rage. Apparently he could not pass it. Usually when you, when you eat things that are weird you can pass it. Like if you eat a penny or a quarter or something, this is obviously a lot bigger than that. This got stuck in his small intestine. And so oh since it was condom wrapped, you know, there's like the balloon effect. And so they had to surgically remove it. And he's apparently he's recovered and he's yeah, okay. He's fine. But the, he ate this. He ate and it. And he, yes, we are sure they, they to, keep it, saying it was ingested. This was not inserted. It no. was ingested. He so ate how it. how he got it down his throat, no idea. But it took him 24 hours <sighs> at the hospital before he even copped to what he did. So mm -hmm. they were doing x-rays. They finally did like a CAT scan or an they MRI did, yeah, or something. They did, a, they did a CAT scan on saw him. It. In fact, I think there's a, yeah, there's a picture of that yeah. like in his actual body. <laughs> you imagine like, being Like what in the world? Can you imagine being a doctor? You're like, what is this? What in the <laughs> hell is this? And then he's like, well, I mean, I ate a condom wrapped banana. Of course, because as you would, that's right? what I did. As you I was would, really hormonal really fit. mad. I mean, the guy, obviously he has major mental issues. Obviously. Damn. Yeah. And so but he, they're using it as an interesting case study, right? Like mm -hmm. they're like, look at this has never been done before. We have first a new of his kind. Right. And so <laughs> I remember when I was a medical writer, um, I used to like read all the journals and stuff like that. And there were some really they do like the funky write ups on people who did crazy crap. And so uh, this, I was right up my alley. I would imagine that this is probably going to be on like the cover of one of those journals at some point.
because it has to be. Oh my God. Those people live for that crap. They're just like, let's put the weirdest. I mean, like yeah. there was some weird, like, I remember this lady, I was on the front of one of the dermatological news or something where it was like this lady's butt and it had some weird rash. And I remember thinking, this is what I do for a living. This is strange. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, this is the thing. They always look, they have the weirdest crap on the covers of those journals. And so I'm sure this will probably be on the cover of one of those journals. And people will be like, this is so cool. Like the doctors will geek out about it. So they'll be like, yeah, I did that. It's the only I one just, of its kind. I, mm -hmm. I still, I have so many questions. Thank you, Leslie. I don't you, understand Leslie. how you can swallow a whole swallow banana, a banana in one, I mean, like without chewing. And right. I, don't, I don't understand. Listen, it'd be hard to swallow a whole banana. I mean, let's. Somebody let's just made fun of me for saying it's right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I know, you right? pervs. <laughs> mm -hmm. You I are mean, my people. Swallowing a whole banana would be tough, but a condom yeah. wrapped banana. Yeah. Like, what makes you even wrap a banana in a condom? <sighs> well, like, why are you doing that? I don't know. Maybe he was practicing for something. Just not that's whack mm -hmm. that's what that is that is right. super whack it is whack that was definitely whack. oh my gosh all right it is time for some my pillow talks my pillow of course huge huge sales <laughs> on all of their bedding including the pillows which if you're not using a my pillow pillow what, what are, are you, you even doing with your life what are you doing and the sheets you guys the giza dream sheets best sheets on the planet oh huge God. sales when you use code chicks at mypillow.com slash chicks chicks <laughs> There is a guy on TikTok who's like one of those like sexy dancer dudes. Like he does couple dance. I don't know what the style of dancing is, but it's basically like you just shove your <laughs> groin into your partner's groin. Oh. <laughs> is that what it is? He's like, that's his title. I'm sexy dance. I'm shove my groin into your groin, dude. That's, that's, his, the, that's, his that's title. the official style. Okay. All right. So there's a, a, a couple who is now making fun of that style. <laughs> and so they're... It's my favorite thing. And what I love about them is that they don't do it to music, right? So you're going to see a clip of the actual oh dude and his God. partner, like doing their sexy moves. And then yeah. this couple reenacting the moves. It's my favorite new thing. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous that would be greg so and i ridiculous. that would be greg and i only we look <laughs> way worse we would look so much worse than that <laughs> oh my god i just oh love that god. love it oh um my. all right again i ask you why can i not have one of these what is why? it Look. What is he's he like doing? a little kangaroo. What is he, he just doing? Wants to snuggle. Look at the dude. The dude is so unaffected. <laughs> <laughs> Come on he? out. Oh, look at that. I mean, why? Why I can't don't even I have know. That? I'm not sure what to make of that entire video. I don't know if he's, he's trained so that raccoon. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I think that's his pet. Which really? again is my point. Like, I don't know why okay. I can't have that. Well, I don't. I'm just, <laughs> you just need to go to the next video. Okay. The next video is, I love this because it's a silver lab and I totally want one. I would oh. love to have a silver lab. They're so beautiful. The and this are they is, gray? They're gray. Okay. Yeah. They're like a, but it's like a, they're almost shimmery. Like their color is almost, it shimmers. Okay. And so this is a lab that loves, loves belly rubs. Oh, he's so pretty. Isn't he? Oh. <laughs> Look at the eyes, too. So pretty. So pretty. Oh, yeah. He's gorgeous. Such a puppy. Such a belly rubs. <laughs> anyway, so I just love cute. that color. So, I do so pretty. Too. Um, this, this has often happened to me, this exact predicament that this girl has found herself in. I think a lot of us will relate. Where's my salad? I forgot to order salad. Oh my God, I'm stupid. <laughs> I've totally done that too. I've done that so many times. Oh my God, yeah. I forgot to order I the salad when I was order ordering this salad. box of donuts. Yeah, Damn it. totally <laughs> forgot. All 12 of them. I'm going to eat them now. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, this dog would like everybody to know how he feels about celery. Stella, do you like celery? <laughs> that was really nice of him to throw that away. <laughs> I, like, I see he didn't just spit it on the floor. That was really sweet of him. He's very polite about it. <laughs> I have to teach my dogs to use the trash can. That's so sweet. <laughs> Um, also, you know how much we love tiny hands here on the Chicks on the Right show. Right. You know, we love the tiny hands. Mm-hmm. Well, tiny so hands. does this dog. <laughs> I got my dog tiny hands and it freaked her brother out. <laughs> <laughs> I got my. <laughs> creeps me out. I never thought about putting him on a dog. I don't oh, think they gosh. would fit. You're going to do that. You're going to do that now, aren't you? You're going to do it. I mean, I may try. I may try. Yeah, she's going to try, you guys. This is what her the whole afternoon is going to be trying to put tiny hands on her dogs. This is what she's going to do. It's so true. It's so true. All right. Another talking dog. Here we go. Joey, say mama. (laughs) (laughs) Joey, say mama. Those are your talks for today. Those are, so good. Many dogs. Those are really good. Are you going to get up and say goodbye to everybody? Are you gonna get yeah, up? You're, he owes us a flap. Come big here. time. Come here. Oh, he saw Astrid. Astrid come in. Astrid will come in and say hello to everybody. See, Astrid says hello. There was Astrid. See? Maybe she'll give us one. Are you going to flap? Oh, you going to flap? Here's a flap <laughs> for you. Astrid, give everybody. <laughs> Very obnoxious, you guys. <laughs> Oh, so sweet. Okay. She's very, she's a violent lover, this one. (laughs) Yes. But she gave everybody flaps. Yep. She came through. You guys bring it in. You guys bring it in. Everybody. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You guys, everybody have a fantastic Tuesday. (laughs) We have a great Tuesday. Now my dogs are fighting in the back. Okay. That's great. (laughs) They're going to kill each other. You guys have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. (laughs) Bye.